Hey my friends, it's hashtag Ask Lauren. All right, I got a question today via Twitter. It's a vegan question and I wanted to address it. Uh, it's something I get asked a lot, but this one was well worded and it ref referenced something that I enjoyed. So Caitlin Soroka on um, Twitter said, do you think it's okay for people to kill animals to preserve their culture? I'm watching the Netflix show Cooked. Part of me thinks she only got through the first quarter of the episode and didn't see the last half of this episode of Cooked about fire. Uh, a lot of it is about meat, cooking meat, how indigenous cultures use and cook meat, and then also how we do it over barbecues and fire pits and smokers. And there's a really weird scene at the end where Michael Pollan, the uh, writer of Cooked, who, who turned it into a docuseries on Netflix, he makes his vegetarian friend and basically influences her to try a piece of slow roasted pork from a pig uh, that they roasted on this fire. And the vegetarian basically says, hmm, it's better than I thought it would taste. I don't like that scene. That scene comes at the end, but that's not what the question is about. The question is about the first few scenes where they are documenting the uh, indigenous tribe of native people that live somewhere in New Zealand or Australia, I think. I didn't look up the exact place, but anyway, they talk about uh, how they're, you know, killing lizards and they have this interesting way of trapping the lizards and finding the lizards and eating those. And um, I think that's what you're referring to. But there are many cultures who uh, still kill and use all parts of the animal. Uh, you know, other um, Aboriginal cultures do that obviously and continue to do that where they live off the land and everything. And it is part of years and years and years and generations and generations, centuries even of culture and the way they're brought up and the practices and religious even beliefs that um, are adopted and practiced that, you know, where animals are sacred, but they're used as sustenance and as ways to keep yourself warm and all these different things. So I think that's what you're addressing and that's what I wanted to talk about because I am obviously vegan and you know that. And so people ask me every little question about what it means to be vegan and is this right and is this wrong and is this right and is this wrong? And um, everyone has different opinions. So this is my opinion based on what you're asking. I liked that Netflix series Cooked a lot. I found it very interesting, obviously not a vegan series. It talks about cheese making and it talks about the barbecue episode, the fire. It's all based on the elements, fire, air, water, and fire, air, water, and anyways, it talks about the elements and it relates it back to food. There's a really amazing episode about air that talks about fermentation and how to make sprouted grains and bread properly. And it's very fascinating. You should watch it vegan or not. Vegans, I think should watch it and, and you know, you'll learn about food that we don't eat, but how much culture and preservation and art is involved in the making of certain foods. And of course I respect cheese making and all these other things. It's like, just cause I'm vegan and I choose not to eat it. It's more of a statement about not wanting to contribute to the current industrialized system that most of our food comes from. And so for me, it makes more sense and it's more right to just not contribute to that and not eat that. If given the option to try food from native cultures or in some remote area where they're culturing cheese and I'm traveling there, like, I don't know if I would eat it. I don't have a clear answer for you. I don't know. I've not been put in that situation yet. Let's go back to this whole thing. Is it okay for people to kill animals to preserve their culture? And my answer in regard to these um, people they documented in that cooked episode is of course it's okay for them to do that um, because I think in this situation, this this um, native group of people, this indigenous, pe these people that live off the land there, they still have their land preserved. They're using it. It's kind of their only means of survival um, because they don't want to integrate into like modern society. Uh, and why should they? Uh, of course, it's fine for them to do it. Uh, they're. I don't think ecologically they're affecting their landscape or their environment to the detriment that we are with our commercialized beef and commercialized dairy or industrialized dairy and all of this stuff. So I think in the case of these people in that cooked episode, yeah, they can go and kill the lizards and eat them and put them on the fire and do what they've been doing for years and years and years and what her mom taught her and her mom taught her and her mom taught, mom taught her and they're not drastically infecting the environment at all. Uh, the way, you know, they're part of 
the environment. They're part of their landscape. They're part of the earth there in this little microcosm in which they live. And I'm sure it all works out the way nature's supposed to. But the problem is, is where we live in Western society and with the demand of what we are used to and the foods we want and all the the fast food and all of that stuff, of course that's not sustainable. And of course, it's, I don't believe that it is right to kill animals at the rate we are uh, in factory farming and all this stuff. So there's a complete difference when you're talking about ancient civilizations and these indigenous tribes that still exist in parts of the world who are living off the land and they're wholly integrated as a part of the puzzle in the environment in which they live and we have no right as vegans to go around saying that they're they're wrong and that their traditions and their culture are wrong and that they shouldn't be doing that and that they're animal killers and that they're murderers or whatever that's how people lived uh, for a very long time living off the land and hunting and gathering and all that stuff. But that's not the world we live in now. And it's nice still that there are those pockets around the world where this stuff is kind of preserved in time. Uh, it, and it really seems like when you watch this segment in Cooked that you've time traveled back in time. So I don't have a problem with it and I don't think anyone really should. Uh, if, especially if they're vegan. So that's what I think. I don't know uh, what you think. You can leave your comments below. And um, quickly, since we're on the topic, Michael Pollan, somebody also asked me what I think of Michael Pollan because Omnivore's Dilemma is a book that I read when I first started to transition and wanted to transition to going vegan. It, watching Food Inc., which he co-produced, I think, and reading Omnivore's Dilemma were really my jumping off points for becoming vegan. And, you know, in some cases, people watch Food Inc. and read Omnivore's Dilemma or watch Cowspiracy or whatever, and they don't make the decision to go vegan. They somehow can justify still what they're doing and they're not deeply affected from watching that information. But I was, and so I made the change. And I think Michael Pollan really presented all sides of the argument in Omnivore's Dilemma for you to make your own decision about what you want to do with the food you eat. And I like that book, and I still recommend recommend it to people. And so yes, Michael Pollan is not a vegan. Um, and he wasn't pushing the agenda one way or the other in that book. I thought it was a really good objective um, display of all sides and really a curious sort of investigation as to what should I eat? I'm truly having an omnivore dilemma and I really related to the book because I was as well. And I think your philosophies and your beliefs can continue to grow and evolve, especially as our world changes and things change. And so I'm sure Michael, Michael Pollan deeply, deeply respects food and cares about food and society and all of these things. And if you're somewhat of a Michael Pollan hater because he's not on the vegan side of the argument, I encourage you to just read more from him and read more about him because I respect him and I think he's a very powerful, influential voice. Uh, to talk about these things and someone who isn't just siding with one thing. You know, in Cooked, he does sort of attack the gluten-free movement and I wouldn't say he attacks the vegan movement at all with that first episode that talks about eating animals, but he really does rationally explore what is happening around the world and how people are trying to preserve aspects of that culture and that history of how we relate to food. And I just think if you have an open mind, which I do, uh, you can listen to these things and not get all defensive and well, it should be like this and it should be vegan or whatever without really having a proper answer as to why. And so, I don't know, I'm just open to Michael Pollan's point of view. And I was just reading this quote from an article he did on the Daily Beast where he's talking about the series Cooked. The genius of industrial agriculture was to make meat, which has been a luxury food for all of human history, something so cheap that people could eat it three times a day. Well, the world simply can't sustain that. For instance, if the Chinese wanted to eat meat in the same quantities that Americans do, we would need 2.3 more worlds to grow all the grain to feed all that meat, and it simply is not sustainable. The climate can't take it, the land can't take it, and God knows the animals can't take it. And pollen is basically picky about the meat he eats. Well, I know that other side of the argument, and we know that like, to scale up grass-fed animals to the level that we demand them would obviously be even less sustainable Again, we would need more land to make more grain to feed more animals if they were all going to be grass-fed. Or sorry, more grass, which we don't even have enough of, which is something they talk about in Cowspiracy. But as if meat consumption does come down, then perhaps there can be, you know, these few and far between small sustainable farms in which to provide really high-priced meat to people who still want to eat it. Again, I don't think it's my place to tell you. You just need to come up with your own opinion, but I just... 
I think people ask me questions about Michael Pollan and is it okay to do this because they themselves think that it's inherently wrong because they've adopted this vegan philosophy and it's just not black and white like that. So that's my opinion. You probably knew how I would answer that. And I welcome your comments and um, things below because I like talking about this. So thanks for listening. That was Ask Lauren. Leave more questions. Hashtag Ask Lauren in the comments as well so I can find them when I search for them. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on Monday. Peace out.